In today's video, we're gonna go over some new interesting Blender add-ons we dropped this week. Add-ons for hard surface modeling, animation, cameras, geometry nodes, and so on. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with an add-on called Normal Magic, which is a new Blender add-on that basically hands you a lot of control over Blender's face normals and shading. So it offers a collection of tools for advanced control for mesh normals, Letting you do fancy stuff, I mean, like seamlessly blending inserted meshes into surfaces, which means you're gonna avoid weird seams on boolean, in addition to fixing those pesky shading artifacts that you get from complex models. So I think if you want to add a nice tool to your hard surface arsenal, this add-on gives you a lot of control of how lighting plays across different surfaces, and it is basically like a Swiss army knife especially for normals, smoothing, transferring, and creating bent normals. And this is gonna help to make your models look great without a ton of manual tweaking. On the other hand, AutoBlend is one of those why I didn't think of this type of add-ons. It uses Blender's compositor with CryptoMat to blend objects together in screen space. So instead of fiddling with geometry or material hacks, you just tag which materials to blend and it will smooth out the seams between different objects as a post-processing effect. And it works in both Cycles and EV. Also, it doesn't care how complex your scene is. But please keep in mind that it is a trick in the render view, so it won't export to a game engine, for example, and transparent materials aren't supported. Unlike any screen space effect, it can have some quirks if objects occlude each other, but within its limits. It is a super cool way to make multiple objects feel seamlessly connected. Another interesting new add-on is called Geo Through, which helps declutter complex scenes by automatically ghosting out stuff that you're not focusing on. The core idea is dynamic display control, so when you select an object, everything else can instantly turn semi-transparent or switch to wireframe, so you can concentrate on the piece that you're working on while still seeing the rest of the scene for context. Conversely, you can also make the selected object transparent and everything else solid. So as you can see, it is really configurable. And the add-on comes with a bunch of presets too, like a blueprint model for technical views and advanced X-ray styles, and even allows collection-specific display rules. For example, always show certain collections as wires and so on. It can really be a huge quality of life booster especially for working on dense scenes without manually hiding objects, and you can even use it to capture cool viewport screenshots, like blueprint-style renders with its custom view modes. On the other hand, a Blender Autofocus Camera is an add-on that brings real camera autofocus behavior into your scene. So what does it do exactly? Basically, it constantly adjusts your camera's focus distance to whatever is in the center of the view giving realistic depth of field shifts without manual keyframing, and I believe this can save you a lot of time. You can dial in how smoothly or quickly the focus changes and even add some extra realism like a slight breathing effect, which means the subtle zoom change that lenses do when focusing. Or maybe you can do a little focus bounce to mimic how real camera's focus might overshoot and settle. It is super handy for animations where your objects move around a lot, so the camera just keeps things sharp, I mean where it should be, like an autofocus in real life, so you can get cinematic focus poles with zero hassle. Now with animation, Loop Master makes creating seamless looping animations in Blender kinda stupidly easy, but how does it do that? Well, instead of setting a bunch of keyframes and fiddling with curves to get a perfect circle, you just add a Loop Master modifier to your object like a camera, a light, or even materials, and whatever motion you have will loop automatically. You can even stack multiple loop modifiers on the same object for complex combined motions, and tweak each one independently. The add-on lets you choose between recursive loops, which is perfect for repeating cycles, or progressive loops that continuously build motion without resetting. It can basically turn any animation into a satisfying endless loop with almost no effort which is awesome for motion graphics, visualizer animations, or any scenario where you want a perfect loop without the usual headache. On the other hand, Vine Generator is a geometry nodes powered add-on, 
which lets you ground vines and ivy around your 3D scenes in a procedural manner. So you basically define which objects or collections the vines should cling to, and the generator will dynamically create vines that wrap and stick to those surfaces. And there are tons of options exposed in the modifier stack, from vine thickness and density to randomness, so you can tweak the look to fit your scene. The underlying node groups are clean and labeled, if you ever want to dive in for very specific customizations. You can also add as many instances of this generator as you like, each targeting different geometry, which makes it super easy to fill in environments with creeping plants. Now back to animations, we have a new add-on called CamAnim 3D, which is a library of cinematic camera movement presets to showcase your project. So, it gives you a bunch of ready-made camera animation templates, so you can turn a static render into kind of a dynamic presentation, with as little effort as possible. Essentially, you drop your model into the provided scene, or apply a preset, and the camera will perform slick moves, like smooth orbits, turntable spins, dynamic dolly-ins, speed ramp transitions, and even those trendy boomerang loop shots. There are something like 150 plus presets, and more hopefully on the way, covering styles from reward camera rigs to stylish social media ready angles. It is kind of plug and play, just pick a camera motion that fits your vibes, and the add-on guides the viewer's eyes around your work in a way that can captivate their attention, without you needing to animate any camera by hand. Another interesting add-on that does a different thing is called Maxon Cinema 4D Import Export Pro which as you can tell from the name, is gonna be a useful pipeline add-on that lets Blender talk directly to Cinema 4D files. With this installed, you can literally open native Cinema 4D scenes in Blender and save Blender projects to Cinema 4D without no conversion or intermediate formats needed. It preserves pretty much everything in the scene during the import and export process, whether it be geometry, materials, textures, animations, cameras, lights, splines, hierarchies, you name it, so nothing gets lost in the translation. This bidirectional workflow is great if you work in studios or teams that juggle Blender and Cinema 4D. So if you're coming for Cinema 4D or you want to bring your own project straight into Blender or vice versa, this add-on can help. Lucero is also a new add-on for lighting and rendering, and it is designed to make lighting your scenes kind of much simpler. So where do we start? Well, it gives you a dedicated UI to easily create and manage lights. For example, you can add lights with IES profiles or GoBots, and you can do that in a couple of clicks and control all the existing lights from one panel. It basically helps with tasks like adjusting light intensities, colors, and switching lights on and off without digging through the outliner. On top of that, the add-on helps with your rendering workflow. You can quickly swap HDRIs or environment lighting, manage render settings presets, and even do some quick compositing tweaks, all within the add-on. It is like a one-stop hub for lighting and rendering, which basically makes everything faster. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.